Moving on to Section 6 of the standard, it provides three alternative procedures that can be used to determine minimum outdoor airflow rates. The ventilation rate procedure, the indoor air quality procedure, and the natural ventilation procedure. It also includes exhaust airflow requirements in a separate section because these rates apply regardless of the design procedure used. The ventilation rate procedure is most widely used and where we're going to spend the majority of this program. It prescribes zone level outdoor airflow rates and the calculation procedures needed to find the zone and system level outdoor airflow rates. For this reason, the ventilation rate procedure is used or referenced in the mechanical codes, other ASHRAE standards, LEED, and other building standards. Later in this program, Chris will discuss the indoor air quality procedure and John will discuss the natural ventilation procedure. The ventilation rate procedure provides the calculations to compute the breathing zone outdoor airflow, zone air distribution effectiveness, and resulting zone outdoor airflow. These zone level flows are then used to determine the outdoor air intake flow, the volume of air needed to enter the air handler, rooftop, or ventilation system to satisfy the outdoor air requirement. I think it might be helpful to use an example building to help illustrate how this works. Here's a single floor layout from a multiple story office building. In addition to a lot of open plan office space, there are private offices along the eastern and western exposures, four conference rooms on the northern and southern walls, and the western core area includes a stairwell, mechanical room, and elevators. The eastern core includes restrooms, a janitor's closet, and stairwells. The total floor area is 23,000 square feet. The first step is to compute the breathing zone outdoor airflow V sub BZ for each zone. Here, the people-based ventilation rate is multiplied by the design population and added to the product of the area-based ventilation rate and zone floor area. And the standard does define the design population. The largest number of people expected to occupy the ventilation zone during typical use. Exception 1 does permit the use of population averaging using the procedure defined in the standards short-term conditions section. Exception 2 allows the default occupancy density provided in table 6-1 to be used where the design zone population value cannot be established. This allows the design team to use a default value if P sub Z cannot be determined. The people and area-based ventilation rates can be found in the extensive table 6-1 located within the standard. These values can be plugged into the equation to determine the breathing zone outdoor airflow. So, if we go back to our example building, each zone's breathing zone outdoor airflow requirement can be determined based upon the prescribed ventilation rates and the design characteristics of the space. For the private offices on the western face, the people-based rate is multiplied by the design population, 5 CFM per person times 6 people. This comes out to be 30 CFM. Next, the area-based rate is multiplied by the zone area. 0.06 times 1,575 square feet, resulting in 95 CFM. These values, 30 and 95 CFM, are summed to determine the total breathing zone outdoor airflow, 125 CFM. This process is repeated for the remaining zones in our example. Now, the breathing zone airflow must be adjusted for a variety of factors, such as how the ventilation air enters the zone, what the temperature difference is between the supply air and the space. This table has been expanded in the 2019 publication to include stratified air systems such as displacement ventilation and underfloor air distribution systems and personalized ventilation systems such as those systems that incorporate ventilation outlets into furniture. The zone air distribution effectiveness value or E sub Z is typically determined by identifying the air distribution configuration and the corresponding value. So for the example, if the system supplies cool air from the ceiling, the effectiveness value is 1.0. And if the system supplies warm air from the ceiling, 
15 degrees above the space temperature, the effectiveness is 0 0.8. Because cooling and heating operation can have different effectiveness values, the designer will need to evaluate both operation modes. The zone effectiveness number is then used as the denominator in the zone outdoor airflow or V sub OZ equation. This is used to determine the amount of outdoor air that needs to be delivered through the supplier diffusers so the ventilation air reaches the actual breathing zone. Returning to our example office building, the breathing zone outdoor air flows are then divided by the zone air distribution effectiveness values during cooling operation to determine the required zone outdoor air flow. So for cooling, 125 CFM is divided by 1.0, resulting in 125 CFM. Using the heating zone air distribution effectiveness value, the calculation is repeated. 125 CFM divided by 0 0.8, yielding 156 CFM. In this example, the zone air distribution effectiveness value is different, 1.0 during cooling and 0 0.8 during heating. As a result, the zone outer airflow values are different in heating compared to cooling operation. Again, this calculation is repeated for each zone.